Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Model Building Workshop. We're continuing with the Panzer II F and G model from Tamiya. And last week we had put the, the turret together, left the hatch open so we could put the crewmen inside. Guns are moving. All the hatches are on. And I opted to put the turret box on the back of the turret. Of course, you don't have to do this. It's an option. So we put the, the wheels on. And they move at the moment. Because they got the rubber stoppers behind them. So there they are, lined up. The return rollers are in. These are glued in place. They don't move. but And later on... At the end of the uh, painting and assembly, we can add the treads to it. So we have these parts done. So today, we're going to be basically working on the upper hull part here and putting some of the gear on this. I do have a couple of pieces left to put on the front hull here, which I'll show you that. We have these two hooks that go on. Piece number 40. So that's these guys. Chisel those off. Sand this down good. Because this is going to slide in to the bottom of the hull. And this will help lock the top of the hull into place afterwards. So let's get these guys together. Making sure these are filed good so they can slide in. <laughs> Alright, so they should slide in. Keyword is always should. <laughs> oh yeah, it goes in nice. So they slide into these slots in the front there. They kind of go right in. Add some glue. So they should just drop in like so, okay? And we'll get this one to slide in. Yeah. So they slide in like that. Let that thing adjust to focus. Hopefully you can see that. All right, so that's the lower hull. That's all set. Here's the upper hull now. Oops. Fold this over to get a better view. Actually, we're all the way down here now. Clean enough so I can see it. All right. So there are a couple of... Uh, vision hatches on the sides here. I'm going to put those on first because they tend to be a little tricky. They're not horrible, but you just got to get them. It takes a bit of a finagling, shall we say, to get to get those in just right. So let me see. They're both piece number 21. So I'll grab one here. Well, that's right. There's an extra window vision slot because I put the box on. That's why I was a little confused for a second there. I'm trying to think, what, why is that there? Because it's why you didn't use it because I put the box on it. So let me see if I can, yeah. <laughs> Oops, don't want to drop it on the floor.
This is supposed to drop in. There it is. It snapped into place. And I say that, but that doesn't seem to want to quite do it. So it's kind of a matter of pushing one thing down and another thing over. <laughs> I'm not quite getting it yet. Okay, there it is. So I don't know if you can see that from where you are there. I'll, I'll move this. You know what? Now that's in there, I'm just going to glue it because now it doesn't want to come out. I'm not going to force it out because it's in there nice. It's fitting. I'll just put the glue in and let it settle. Okay, I'll do the other side and try to show you how this drops in. So it's kind of a drop and pop. Again, we'll file that down because we don't have a whole lot of room to play with on this. All right, so you see where the hatch opening is on the side of the hull. So this, it, yeah, right. Got to drop it in, and then from the inside, you got to pop it in. There it is. So it drops down and then pops against the wall of the hull on the outside. Basically, you, you will feel it pop. All right, so there they are. And glue on my fingers. <laughs> So there's not a whole lot to the top, mostly like headlights and tools and things of that sort. So I'm going to start putting some of these boxes on the back. So we've got box number 22 here, which goes on the back over here. Oops. Carried away with a knife here. Maybe I should go back to the wire cutters. That's kind of right on the seam here. Sometimes where they have the model joining the tree, the piece, be right where there's some d delicate details. It can be difficult to cut them out nicely. All right, now this is like some sort of a metal bar here, and that's facing inside on the hull. So this is going to go back here. Oh yeah, you can even feel where it goes. It's right on the back there. So I'm going to add some glue. There's a pin there too. That's good. Add some glue on the bottom of the box. Set the pin in. And boom, yeah. Okay. So there's that box on the back. It's another toolbox sitting on the engine deck here. Let's see if I can carefully cut this one without causing any oops moments. Come on. Uh, toolbox looks like the latch is this direction. Okay. Let me put some glue on the bottom here. Two prominent holes in the back of the engine deck. And down it goes. Okay. That's not too bad. Ah, there's another window. back there 29 29 yes it is bingo and the sad thing is I would probably be talking to myself like this even if the camera wasn't on 
Just don't tell anybody. <laughs> Actually, I'll probably be playing some music. And no, I don't usually sing along because I don't like to torture my own ears with my horrible voice. <laughs> All right, so there's a window that goes back here. So the vision slot in the back there. All right, working my way forward. There's this big plate here on the front, the armored plate, and it has like vision blocks. Supposedly, with this version, they have a real vision slit and a fake one. I guess they were trying to make the enemy gunners aim at the wrong spot where the driver wasn't, instead of where the driver was. At least, I think that's the story with this. Yeah, a little bit on the sides here. Not exactly square. Yep, we've got some bumps on the back here that aren't too good. Make sure this sits really well. Okay. So there's a hole. Well, that's good. So there's a peg and there's a hole, so that way we can't goof up which direction it goes. Have to go that way, but <laughs> gonna add some glue to the front here. Put this armor plate and vision slot there. See that it goes right in the front. Okay. And what else do we have? We've got some tiny stuff now. All the headlights. These tend to be annoying, but uh, well, they're not, they're not the smallest. They are small. The headlights and this other nighttime light here with a deflector so the light doesn't shine up. If you notice on the top of these headlights, there's these two round blobs of plastic that are not supposed to be on this. So we have to trim those off first, okay? That's just a molding issue. Oh, let's cut these headlights off. Come on. And they go into these two little holes that are on the fender. There's one here and one there. You can see them. Hole. Hole. That's where those headlights are going to go. I'll get a drop of glue in there just enough to get one headlight in. One thing that's nice about Tamiya model kits is that they tend to go together without too much fuss. So, as small as these pieces are, at least they fit. Because I said that. No, still working. There it goes. Make sure they're kind of lining up straight to the front, which they are. Sort of. <laughs> Get that one. Okay. So look that way. Yeah. Do move easily. So there's your headlights. Of course, those often wouldn't be used in combat conditions. You wouldn't want to give away your position. And that's why we've got piece number nine. This is the special, I believe it's called a no-tech light. And this was designed to like I said earlier, to not produce too much light and certainly not send it up so the airplanes could see it. It's supposed to be kind of a reduced visibility thing. Yeah, an extra flash on that. 
Yeah, I don't want to get too crazy because it's going to fall on the floor. So that, I believe, goes, yeah, there's a hole here on the fender. It's a raised part right there. You can see it. It's going to drop into that. So it kind of fits all right so it fits like so oh, you can see that let's see how that goes all right there's a big spare tire that's going on the front which i may let me see let me get it out I'll put it down I may want to paint this separately and put it on afterwards. I gotta make that decision. But I'll show you how it goes on. Goes like that. Let's get the three slots and just drops in. Uh, yeah, I think I can put that on and just paint that carefully afterwards. That shouldn't be a problem. So a little bit of glue to these slots. I'm gonna drop this in. Yeah, it should work, and then I'll carefully paint that tire afterwards because that's going to look like oh, come on see how the tire the spare tire is on this one it's the lights and the headlights is those clamps that kind of help lock the thing in there's the toolboxes here and we've got some other tools to put on we're going to put on a jack it's like a sledgehammer over it's going to go over here and a shovel is going to go over there and this tray looking thing here on the side, this long bar, what that actually is, it's a wooden container that the antenna sits in. So when it's not using the radio, the, the antenna sits in this uh, trough here. And when they're using it, it would pull, go up and stand up. But they have it down which is probably a wise thing in this model because antennas tend to break really easily so if it's if it's down you can't break it <laughs> not a bad idea all right so let me put that i'm gonna put the shovel on of course you can also try to paint the shovel first you have to be really careful removing the shovel because it's delicate and it's easy to break the uh, the long slender part of it and we don't want that to happen try to get that yeah all right okay so the shovel looks like there's two oh there's several holes here let me see you really got to pay attention all right, looks like it's going to go, there's an axe underneath it, so it looks like it's going to go sit over the axe. Okay, and then I'm going to get that antenna holder just this big long piece here see if you look at it carefully you can see the base of the antenna you can see it in there 
it's actually molded in there. And it's kind of unfortunate that they don't explain what these parts are when you're putting it on the model, because it's kind of interesting that that's what that is. But if you're putting on a model, you would just like, oh, that's a nice box, and just you wouldn't think twice about what you're putting on there. All right, so there's a hole in front, and there's these two tabs sticking up. Yeah, tab there, there, and the hole. And get that in the hole at the bottom. And those two should just sit right on there. Like so. All right. And that just leaves us with a couple of tools. And that's kind of it for, uh, for the assembly on this. Oh, there's also another... I'll put this on later but because I want to paint this. But you'll see here there's uh, spare treads on a railing. And they would go on the front of the hull if you wanted to. They don't have to. It goes there. So it's not only is it spare track, but the Germans often and other countries often put these on for two reasons. One, it's bonus tracks in case you get damaged track, like you hit a rock or a landmine and the track comes comes undone, you may need to replace track links and get yourself going again. But the other thing it does, it adds this much extra armor to the front of the vehicle as protection from, you know, enemy fire. So it kind of has two two roles. So it's also a cheap way of adding more armor to your, your vehicle for protection. Okay, so I'm going to get the jack, which is this weird looking thing here. That's the jack. Believe it or not, they could, you know, jack up the vehicle and Sometimes this box back here, or some of the toolboxes, they would actually put on the ground, put the jack on top of the box to give it good footing, and then jack the vehicle up enough to replace a tire. Because believe it or not, you could get a damaged tire, even on a tank. All right, that's the jack. I think I want to get the uh, shovel on first because it's inside. It's going to be hard to get at. This is like a sledgehammer. So the sledgehammer, I gathered one of the main reasons it's here is that when you do lose a track link and you have to put a new one in, there are pins that tend to go through and hold the track links in and make them movable so each track link can go around and move. But you need to drive a pin through it and then ham you have to hammer the pin in there to get your track fixed and these these other bits of rod are most likely you would assemble the rods together and that would be the gun cleaning tube it would go down and clean out the barrel of the cannon because you have to you have to clean it of all the gunk and so forth that happens when you fire a cannon over and over again they get dirty as well as picking up dirt from the battlefield or dust from a lot of these are used in the desert so you gotta you know get all the dust out of them too because the desert sand was pretty brutal on any kind of machinery and lots of these were used there So most of the, I'll have to take a look at your, the emblems, but most of these decal options, if you were to use the, the decals, are either for the Sahara Desert, you know, North Africa, Libya, Egypt, Tunisia, that battlefront, or out in the Russian fields. That's kind of where most of these were. All right, so I think that's it for the... Uh, the whole top. My, the jack is not sitting right. All right, so you see how the jack and the hammer are sitting there? And I'll show you. You can see it on the finished one here. 
the paint the details enough like the silver just enough to make it show and this one's got the track link in the front for an added bonus and for fun I added a helmet on the back of the turret I just glued one on because oftentimes they would do that have their gear kind of hanging on the back of the vehicle so this would just slide in like so and it would pop in the back I can get it to... there it is you, you hear that and pop it's in you don't even have to glue that because it's a very good fit so you just slide it in to where these two hooks are and there's a tab here that pops into this storage box and back and clunk it's on that's not really going anywhere I mean you could pry it off if you had to but and then we get the turret which is dry good it's been a while since I worked on it since the last episode and let's see how that fits and there you go it's a little tight you could always I'll show you if you want it to turn a little bit easier you can take your emery board and you can file you see there and file underneath these two tabs shave it down a little bit and it might give you a, a slightly better fit yeah see just enough to make that turn a little bit better all right so there's the Panzer II you know the tracks would go on afterwards I'm not going to pop them on now because I just finished these wheels a little while ago before I started filming so I don't want them to bend and go gooish because <laughs> it'll look terrible so let me check on the time and then we'll see if we get time to work on some figures let's take a peek here all right all right we'll talk about the figures for a second but I also want to talk about the painting for this. So this has been, this kit has been been out for a long time, since the 1970s when this kit was first released. And it continues to get re-released in different versions, you know. Um, but originally, if you get an older kit, it, it came with this color sheet, which I guess they don't want to pay for the color printing anymore. So it gave you this paint guide so and now they just give you a black and white one which unfortunately mine's all in Japanese and odds are you'll get one that's all in Japanese too it seems to be how they're making it now so you see the pictures but you don't quite know well how, what color they're supposed to be well here's the color guide here so one of the easy ways of doing this is to grab like an olive green or some kind of a color like that and you can paint these spots on you know grab a brush either you can either go with a small one and kind of do little blotches like that I wouldn't go too big this one might be might be just good enough size to paint a blotch on so you could do it just green blotches like this one or you do the brown blotches like that one you could do a combination of green and brown uh this color standard dark yellow was common in the desert and actually this was used in europe too because it tends to be the it looks uh like the color of hay and and corn and crops so it tended to blend in well with the fields of dried, you know, grass and hay. So that was not not uncommon to see this in Europe. And the early part of the war, the gray, which I think a lot of us are familiar with from the war movies, the Germans had the gray versions. In the later half of the war, they started doing camouflage like this. So it does give you some, you know, suggestions of the gray, the dark yellow, the red brown, and uh, an olive green. Or a dark green color if you want to spray it they do have Tamiya does make you know the dark yellow spray paint although 
it's pretty good as is because this is a pretty good color right now if you don't want to add that but you could and then there's the dark gray paint which is you know the base color of this one here i added a little bit of camouflage to that but but still you could do that if you wanted and for the decals in case you're curious it depends how detailed you want to go so the markings are here they're in japanese but i can translate what these are because i'm familiar with these vehicles so this top one here it's got this skull above the waves this was actually for a unit that was known for river crossings they had tanks that were equipped specially to go crossing rivers so even after that mission was over they continued to use this emblem basically to commemorate their famous river crossings that they had done earlier in the war so that's what this one is here that's the 18th panzer division with the the floating skull in the water so that's what that is uh, this one here is the third panzer division it's got the bear emblem and this uh weird emblem here with the two dots that's the third these go to the third panzer division the bears up front and number on the side and these uh things go on the back and on the front so of course they kind of show you here this one here is the 15th panzer division this is a desert vehicle so this is in the war in north africa and basically what the r stands for it means a regimental command vehicle that's what the R is for. So that's a command tank. And that's in the Sahara Desert. Uh, this one here is another desert one with a 21st Panzer Division. Um, and that's got a number Roman numeral 2, which means second company command vehicle. That's what that is. Uh, now we get on to the double X's. And that's the 6th Panzer Division. This is in Russia. And that's kind of what what I did here this is this. that's kind of what that one is so you also show you a trick you can do here with using cotton dabbing cotton to make the camouflage blotches just a thought that they've got too so I'm going to quickly try to show you some of the figures I got some that I had done before. So here's the, the tank commander here. Put a base on him to stand him up. Because more that because that's the tank here that, that's closed the hatch on it. And you get some options for helmets on these guys. So here's one guy here that I did. And you can see all the gear on the back, which is the you know, they got the cylindrical gas mask container. They've got a mess kit, a canteen. Uh, like a sleeping bag or bedroll kind of thing. This guy's got a tropical helmet that he's wearing because it's he's in the desert. What is this guy here? Oh, there goes the dehumidifier. Excuse the noise. I'll probably finish this up pretty quickly then. It's a guy with a submachine gun. Some gear on the back. There's the commander here. And granted, I get a little carried away with the color choices. You know, I have a good set of paints, so I kind of did a lot of different colors on them. You certainly don't have to get this crazy with all the different paints in here <laughs> that, that I used here. But and here's another guy carrying a machine gun, also wearing a tropical helmet. So those are the figures that come with this vehicle. And I'll do one quickly here. I'll do the commander. Or try to. on the sign for the molding. So 
So yeah, it's a little awkward, so I need some filing. Hoping that DV humidifier goes off quickly. But that is the downside of filming in your basement. <laughs> you get all these weird noises and stuff because, you know, it's a basement. <laughs> I don't have a particularly good uh, TV studio at my house to do these videos, so I am sorry for that. Unfortunately, the figures have got a lot of cleaning up to do to them. Depends how fussy you want to get with these. But I definitely notice a very prominent mold seam running down them. Don't get too crazy. But... This guy's holding his binoculars. See if I can get the arms on. Get a sense of how this is going to look. So just kind of glue the arm on. And while it's loose, you can kind of move it to try to get it where you want it. This one on, get the binoculars. Okay. Oh. Let's see how this one fit. Alright, I'm gonna try it with the legs. This fear. Although I've done this model before and it, it, it does fit in there. Let's hope it does today. On this one. A little bit of glue there. Yeah. So it's going to stick right away. I know I've managed to get him here before. Come on. Well, he'll go in there like he, he can go in there <laughs> carefully, but you can get him to go in. So that's how he would go. Oops, I kind of slide too much there. So you see how that goes? There's the guy. Again, there's a, a painted version. Just the tricky part you got to do, though, with these other figures, is you have to get these arms, and you got to drop the weapon into the arms before the arms dry. So that's that's the hard part. So you got to try to get it in there, glue the arms while it's still loose, fit the rifle in, glue the rifle, and then it should lock in pretty good. Okay. See what I mean? So you get these two arms, and you want to make sure that you've got this rifle ready to go in, so you can continue to move and adjust the arms to get the rifle where you want it. Because if you glue it first and just and let it dry, the, he may not be able to actually hold the rifle. It might be going on a weird angle. So if you want to use the rifles, make sure you get the arms still loose enough that you can move all the stuff in there. And if you want, they do come with the, whoops, the bases are here. 
you know. The tricky part is you got to file the feet down a little bit and put glue, and you got to hold it for a while because it's an odd angle. So you got to let them have time to dry. So I think I held them. I also think I put like bottles of paint or something next to them to kind of lock them in position so that they couldn't fall over. So that's the trick with that. So hopefully you'll have fun building this model. I hope I gave you some uh, good pointers on what to do and hope you enjoy this because it is a pretty fun model and it's a nice one to have. And, and your kids should enjoy that and, and it's kind of fun to play with also. This is a pretty rugged model. Some are very delicate. This one's actually pretty good and could handle some, some play. And you get your little soldiers that go with it. And like I said before, you can always get more soldiers and make a scene with them. I don't know if I got them here. I don't right now. But you can make a, easily make a scene with some other soldiers. I got one here, for example. He's like the French Foreign Legion. <laughs> you know, that could be fighting them. Or, you know, I've got a Russian soldier over here. You know, that you can. So they have different sets, and you can come up with all kinds of interesting possibilities. Oh, here they are. Yeah. It's like they got you know, the French or the British and the Indians, for example. And then. It is also the United States. So have fun. Happy building. Hope you enjoyed that. And hope to see you guys real soon. Okay. We'll talk to you next week and uh, we'll have another project for next week. Okay. All right. Bye now.